I'm Chris Irway. Uh, I was a co-founder of a company called Tracelytics, which is now known as Traceview, and is uh, one of the uh, four products that make up this HoloWinds monitoring cloud. And so we, um, at SolarWinds, we've assembled this portfolio of companies, of which uh, my, my team and product is the most recent entrant back in uh, September, uh, which encompasses all the layers of a um, you know, modern cloud environment from Pingdom, which focuses on real user monitoring, web browsers, clients, and end users, to Traceview, which looks at the application code and the infrastructure that runs that application and the interactions between those two. Uh, and Labrado, which is all about telemetry, dashboarding, real-time alerting, charting, and then Paper Trail, which is a log aggregation system that does um, uh, that forms a common dashboard for your team to look at uh, logs and, and sort and filter on logs. And so together, we're calling this the uh, the, the monitoring cloud. And, and as you can see, we ho we support a range of different infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, hybrid cloud, public cloud, private cloud use cases um, with with the four the four products. Uh, so I'm going to take you on a whirlwind tour of all four of them. And so please, you know, interrupt me as we go along because I might get to the third product and you'll have a question about the first one. And um, and just give you a taste. You know, in a half an hour, I don't know if I can, you know, go <laughs> drill into There's a lot of surface area to cover, so I can't get into exactly every single feature. But I, I think we can get through a ton of what's what's in them. Um, so Pingdom is all about understanding the uh, the performance and the uptime of your web applications or really any server application based on clients, whether they're deployed around the world on hosts that Pingdom monitors from or whether they're your real users and end users trying to connect to your, to your site. And so the simplest ty type of uptime check uh, provided by Pingdom is just simply, is the site responding and is it alive and is it responsive? And so here you can see We've got a range of checks, um, checking different web properties in the SolarWinds, Librato, and Pingdom universe. And if we want to add a new check, this gives you an idea of the, um, the different types of probes we can, we can use. So here you can monitor web servers making, I'm sorry, mail servers, making sure the SMTP, POP3, IMAP servers are up. Uh, you can test from a range of locations that Pingdom um, probes from around the globe, and then you can uh, set the the alert thresholds so that different people know when uh, things are down or not responsive. Uh, we also support you know, more um, basic checks such as TCP ports, ping, DNS lookups, uh, UDP uh, connections, well, not UDP connections. And then for the HTTP checks, which is more of the bread and butter here, you can uh, specify a range of options such as uh, basic authentication, you can specify specific post data in your requests, you can add user agents and other HTTP headers. and uh, and tell yourself when your website's down. And so this is a really basic tool for teams to understand what it is that, uh, when, exactly when their site goes down and then, under, and then get an alert or have someone wake up or have um, some basic SLA monitoring on, on websites. So let's take a look at um, the SolarWinds, oh, let's take a look at the SolarWinds history of uptime. You know, in this um, period of time there was a recently a downtime incident that was observed from several of our, a uh, couple of our locations. You can see here there was a 502 error returned <coughs> on this date from two of our uh, monitoring locations in North America. And so this is um, all the details that we collect on the request headers and uh, re response headers as well as the, the, the page that was loaded. And so what you get from Pingdom is not just this message here, but then you can integrate with a number of alerting uh, integrations, whether by email or to, uh, to other webhooks and such. Are you alerting when there's, if multiple locations are reporting that one, that a service is unavailable? Or if it's any of the locations are reporting that a service is unavailable? Yeah, I think any, any of the locations. And here, um, I'd have to get back to you on that, but uh, I think correlated failures between um, probes is, uh, is, is part of what's uh, causing the, uh, the alerts to be uh, more severe here. Um, I'm not an expert on Pingdom, but I'm 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 pretty sure that that is that is what's happening. And uh, here, the checks um, are are being performed by a range of locations. So it's not just Las Vegas and uh, and here it's Charlotte and LA. And so you can sort of see that these um, these bursts of events happening during the day, and then the resolution in between. Uh, it's it's sort of cycling through a range of different uh, locations in North America as time goes on. So um, 
it's it's not it's sort of random which which host you're you're checking. Yeah, so basically what I'm trying to get at is like imagine that one of those one of the monitoring locations right. goes offline and then mm -hmm. I don't need to be woken up because oh. other ones are online, so I know my site is up. I don't I don't want to be woken up in the middle of the night because of a failure that's unrelated to my particular um, you know, my servers or anything. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get back to you on exactly what the threshold for a failure um, that goes to alert mm -hmm. is required, but uh, um, I do believe that, that a multiple confirmation is, is necessary okay. to cause a, a critical alert. So beyond just simple uptime checks, there's a, there's a lot more about your site's um, availability besides just whether or not a web server is responding with a uh, 400 you know, or 200, that is. And so you know, there's this other feature called transaction, uh, <coughs> transaction um, monitoring, which is not just about a single page being up or down, but about a whole flow of um, of interactions with a website being up, and so I'm going to show you this check that we have configured for the Pingdom signup page, and it provides you with this uh, interactive scripting language where you can author a check in sort of plain English and uh, teach it to fill in a form or click a button, and uh, I'll show you how easy it is to do right now. So you could just go to a specific URL. I'm going to type in solarwinds.com here. And then um, basically, there's all these options for what types of um, interactions you want to program with the site. And this enables someone who may not be a programmer even to just choose. I'm here, I'm going to pick vman. And so you see, I'm already allowing for a pretty sophisticated level of interactions with a, with a workflow, where now I'm filling in a form with my name. Uh, and, and moving forward in a, in a flow, and then I can submit the form and have a multi-page workflow that's being tested interactively from, again, all these different edge locations around the, the world. And like the other checks, these are measured and probed periodically at a, at a rate of your choosing, and then um, measured over time so that you can go in and see exactly uh, whether or not these checks are failing and how long the, uh, the durations of the checks took. Beyond transaction monitoring and uptime monitoring, pay, uh, Pingdom also provides a uh, page speed. And so this is very similar to the developer tools that um, front-end developers use in their browser, except that instead of just uh, uh, sequestering that information inside of a single developer's browser on a single laptop or, or a desktop machine, this is a, this is a consistent base of, of reports over time that you can share with your team so that everyone can collaboratively look at and, and understand performance of a page load from uh, remote locations. So we're going to look at the USA Today website. And so here, we're consistently checking the performance of the USA Today website to understand, well, it's getting a pretty poor grade from the, the report cards that you might see in um, PageSpeed or YSlow. And so we can look in at the most recent of these checks. And so here, we have a, a browser that's running in the, in the cloud that Pingdom is monitoring uh, the, uh, and loading your page. and then doing a lot of the same types of things that front-end developers do when they try to debug performance. So here you get the report card on what you could do to improve the performance of your page load times, as well as a breakdown of all the content that's downloaded by the, the browser in response to a request. And then this, this traditional waterfall graph, graph where you can see, OK, I'm loading all this stuff. There's a lot of pictures, a lot of JavaScript, a lot of ad networks. And um, each of these HP requests, just like with, um, oh, I've clicked. Each of these, uh, you get the request headers and the response headers for each of the, the content that you're loading. And then the developer can use their eyeballs to scan through and understand, oh, OK, um, a lot of media on this site. And also look at the uh, exact breakdown of, oh, what's this? Oh, it looks like receive time for this particular piece of JavaScript took 1.7 seconds. And this is uh, powerful for uh, also uh, optimize uh, a website. Uh, there is a comparison uh, f feature uh, where you can uh, compare to different uh, results uh, in different time uh, before and after uh, you have optimized uh, your site. Right. Um, and so the that so the comparison feature is um, basically provided by the, the timeline analysis. So you can track the. Um, the performance of your test of your site over time, and so as your team works together to improve the performance by working through the the performance uh, recommendations, such as go add some expires headers and do a better job of caching, 
um, the, the end goal is to make it so that these, um, the timeline of these checks goes down over time. And this is similar to some of the other performance products I'll show you with Trace, Trace, TraceView, where we're you know, giving you real-time monitoring of your production site so that every time you make a release, you can, you can go in and look at before mm -hmm. and after use cases. Um, but there's no um, automated analysis of, of before okay. and after cases today, but that's, uh, that's something that would be an interesting feature. Um, and so this is the uh, HBeed product, uh, the PageSpeed uh, part of Pingdom. And, um, and yeah, so this is, a, this is a way of understanding the performance from browsers hosted by Pingdom. But beyond browsers that uh, are running synthetic checks across multiple locations, you might also want to know how are your real users experiencing the, the performance of your own web properties. And that's the fourth piece of Pingdom's monitoring suite is real user monitoring. And so this is enabled by embedding a little bit of JavaScript in your, uh, in your page. And so this requires you to modify your template or your headers or footers to stick, um, to stick some tracking codes into um, your web properties so that it funnels performance data from real browsers and real platforms into Pingdom. And so if we want to look at the Pingdom marketing page, we can understand the performance over the past week of different countries and browsers and platforms. Uh, we can understand how many of the users were frustrated or tolerating or satisfied, and that's using thresholds that you set here up, up above about um, you know, exactly what, what types of performance you're willing to tolerate. And then you get to understand, OK, there's a lot of countries where internet access isn't so great, or it's a little bit slower than, than other locations. And as well as understanding and being able to drill down into the breakdown of browsers and platforms and devices that are making up your, your web your web uh, traffic. So if we want to drill into browsers, we can go and look more deeply into the report and understand, OK, here's the different performance breakdowns based on the, uh, the different browser types that are hitting this page, as well as um, geographic breakdowns and other uh, deeper dives into this information. So now you're understanding both the um, the performance experience by real users, and you know, RUM data is kind of noisy. It's always going to be subject to the bandwidth constraints of the user or their specific device, or if they're on a, the subway or not, and all sorts of reasons why page load times are, are um, in in, real, in practice, are very noisy. And and so, combining real user monitoring with the synthetic checks of the uptime and transaction monitoring and the page speed features is is really the the front end team and the web app team's best best way to understand um, a consistent measurement base, which is informed by the synthetic checks, with the real user measurements, which are informed by whether or not you're in a specific African nation, which doesn't have great bandwidth, or you know, those are things that um, that measurement from real user monitoring is is, is providing that last mile of, of performance understanding. That's a question. Mm -hmm. um, when you were looking, you're, you're showing that you kind of could check it from what looked to be like a bunch of different Amazon data centers or something, right? Because it was like USA East, USA West. Um, that's great, but a lot of that's self-contained. If you're hosting your website there, a lot of that's self-contained within the data center. Are you able to set up monitoring stations at some of, say, the larger ISPs? Because most of your customer traffic is going to come through Comcast <coughs> or Level 3 or something, and be able to understand that people are having a bad experience because they're on a specific ISP. Um, I, I don't see anything in there that would be able to drill down to the, something like that. That's right. At present, Pingdom's um, got dozens of locations uh, around the globe, but there are none that are um, available to specifically target an ISP or specific provider. <laughs> That's actually a good point, though, right? Because one of the things you end up looking up a lot, or at least I do, is status on peering points, right? Across the, usually across the country, and sometimes mm -hmm. internationally, mm -hmm. but generally the peering points between, say, level three and you know, AT&T or you know, Verizon or whoever, right? And you notice that page load times, let's say, for the New York Times, when it's hosted, you know, in New York, because their backup site's in Seattle, if you were to hit one from the East Coast, you've got perfect load times. You hit the same site from the West Coast, and it's just crap, right? Uh, right. So I'm assuming, based on your last answer, that's not taken into account here? Or is there a way for you to manually sort of steer your, your searches? for lack of a better word. Um, yeah, at present, you can only segment your, your probes from the, uh, yeah, from locations such as here, Eastern US, which is as, uh, as specific as it, as okay. it gets. And so the, um, 
The repeatability of the experiments is provided by the, the, the set of locations you're testing from, but the, um, the specific network details, and I know this is a network uh, you know, interested audience, isn't, um, isn't something that's currently leveraged today or, or provided today, the you know, backbone and peering information. Uh, yeah, it's sort of more geared towards consumer web properties and, and you know, teams that are um, perhaps a little less network centric than, uh, than um, the Orion. That's fair enough. Yeah. Just curious. I think it'd be a good feature to have. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I know this is an audience that's very interested in, you know, peering and, and network-based performance impacts. Um, so going back to uh, Pingdom, the, uh, and so this is the final tab that shows you uh, the different probe servers of, of the locations that, that, that are provided by, by Pingdom. And, and, um, and so, yeah, I guess, I guess it remains an exercise to the user to go and understand the network and uh, characteristics of each of the uh, locations around the world. So the, um, and then finally, you know, once you're getting all this data, you might want to have, uh, certainly you're sharing it right, right away with your team by inviting them to look at the, the Pingdom website. But if you want to share reports, whether by emailing them right periodically, maybe you want to RUM performance or PHP performance monthly or weekly report, you can do so. There's also a status page feature where you can uh, publicize your uptime to uh, your customers by uh, incorporating some of the uptime checks into this cute status page that lets you show your red, yellow, green to your, your own customers. And then um, there's also integrations, which I'm going to use. Uh, there's an API, which gives you ac programmatic access to all the data I've shown you so far. And also there's integrations. Uh, chief among them is the Libretto integration, which lets you uh, monitor and the performance of your checks and the latency of these checks from the point of view of our next monitoring cloud product, Librata. So if there's no more questions about Ping, I'm going to jump right in. I have one question. Um, sure. For the uptime, um, how is that calculated over what period of time? Um, is it just as long as Pingdom's running or is it reset every year? Oh, the SLAs you mean? Yes, for the uptime. Yeah, so the uptime is, is calculated over a window of your choosing. So if okay. you go into um, a specific check and then you're looking at, oh, right, click on thing. If you're looking at, you know, this specific check of www.brado.com, it's going to give you this uptime metric, but then if you start to go back and say, well, what about in the last six months? What's my SLA there? Then you might realize, oh, okay, I've got only four nines for this because um, I had this, this burst of downtime at this moment. But that that's... landing page mm -hmm. that you were on before you drilled down, um, there's a column. So are you able to set that time period in that burst page? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's here too as okay. well. Yeah, Perfect. and so yeah, everything is, um, I should have shown you before, but yeah, everything here is filtered on, on time. And so yeah, you do see a lot more stuff, uh, or these red bars when you scroll back a whole year. Is the uptime calculated based on all of the monitors that you have active on it? That's right, yeah. So if you, there was one site, there was one location that couldn't access my website, but four others could, I would not have 100% uptime? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to investigate the threshold of what is a failure, because I, I don't want to give you the false impression that it's just a single um, ch failed check from a single location. I, I, all the checks I've ever seen fail have, right, were correlated at two different um, spots. I've ever, actually never seen a single location okay. show up in the, in the details screen, so that's my impression. But yeah, I'm not an expert here, sorry. Nice. Actually, I want to take a second and just answer, I think, a couple of fantastic questions we had about um, Pingdom. Um, well, it's unfair for Chris to have to represent four products all in all in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so some good questions. I think if I can remember, one of them was, um, uh, G, you know, gee, what happens when you know you've got 104 probes around the world? Um, maybe it's okay that you don't, you know, you, you don't want to be woken up at 2 a.m. if it's you can't get to your site from Asia, but it is important if it's <coughs> North America. Obviously, I'm an ethnocentric American, having used that example, I guess. But um, so the answer is yes. There's um, uh, granularity at a geo level, North America, Europe, and Asia, actually those three. Um, within a region, should multiple probes fail? Or kind of, I think one of the questions was, hey, what happens with in a region? How do you calculate uptime? Kind of what's the logic under there? I think just adding flavor to what Chris had said um, was that the, the logic in the system is such that um, if two probes um, are not you know, responding with, with uptime or not responding with a positive check, um, consecutively, two times consecutively, um, and that's sort of the, then that's the flag. Um, of course, you're able to configure some of that by um, setting your uh, 
uptime check and maybe extending that out to the extent that you didn't like it. So I think the other one was a great question. Hey, what if I, so I recognize you've got all of these probes, you know, around the world, but maybe I want to do, maybe, you know, can I have a, can I host my own probe in my own data center? And right now um, that isn't the case, just like, as Chris had said, um, I think it's, you know, the, the way in which, you know, the, the service is monetized and sort of the effort, the extent to which our support teams could um, uh, keep the right uh, support and price point for that is probably the, probably the challenge there.